Hello YouTube. If you've been watching the channel, especially the videos where I discuss programming, you have heard me say that YouTube fitness is powerlifting centric. And a lot of people want to know what that means, because in truth, it's quite nebulous. And so for years, actually two years now, I've been promising a video about powerlifting because I truly believe that there is a hidden history to YouTube fitness that most people don't realize exists, but it actually explains the entire trajectory of the platform and the reason why people train the way they train and why bodybuilding is the way it is today. So here is my opportunity to actually lay it bare for you guys and tell you the story of how strength sports came to completely mug bodybuilding, how bodybuilding in return was pretty much destroyed from the inside and the consequences on people like you and I, because we are part of this culture and the culture shift had a direct impact on the way we train, on the way we think about hypertrophy, on the way we approach everything in reality related to what we call fitness. So let's get into it. I'm going to separate the video in three segments. The first one is going to be the history of strength sports, at least on this platform. I'm mainly going to focus on powerlifting, but you will see that strongman, calisthenics, Oli Olympic weightlifting also play a role. Then we'll talk about the domination of strength sports and the reasons why they dominated and also the fashion. I'm, I want to explain to you exactly how strength sports came to occupy the scene, but the reason why in particular they managed to maintain that position of superiority because there are reasons. It's not by mistake. When someone gets defeated, in this case bodybuilding, it's for a reason and the reasons are fascinating. And then we're going to be talking about the way it impacted you, so the psychology shift that occurred, the way you think about training, and the reason why that shift, even though it started as something beneficial, is now extremely detrimental to bodybuilding, and the reason why many people, maybe you also included, are stuck with shit physics. So let's get into it. For the people who are not aware or who are new to YouTube fitness, I'm going to have to take you back 10 years plus. We're going to have to go back to 2009, when the platform, when YouTube was just created. YouTube Fitness was not started the first day that YouTube came online. It took some time. It took actually a few years. But by 2012, there was already a solidly established community of lifters on YouTube. And there were already several influencers. And if you're an OG like I am, and you remember those days, you also remember that back then, YouTube was bodybuilding centric, meaning that every single big YouTuber was a bodybuilder. It was all about physique and aesthetics. And that's all that really mattered. That's all that people focused on. And unlike what you might think, these were not actually good days. These were actually the worst days of YouTube fitness because the people giving advice were for the vast majority PD users because they were the ones who made the transition between magazines into YouTube fitness. They jumped from one marketing platform to the other and they took with them all of the shit advice that was present in those magazines at the time. So for all of young men, me included, the type of advice we had available was extremely bad, meaning that it's the type of advice that you could follow for years and years and see almost no results. It's what we're talking about. It was a dark age and nothing was coming inside to actually solve that problem because bodybuilding was stagnant. Those, pro, those PD users and pro bodybuilders were just recycling the same ideas that never really worked for natural lifters, but there was no solution until a certain event occurred. And that event is the rise of powerlifting. For those again that remember, it truly came out of nowhere. And in a few months, powerlifting was everywhere, meaning that the channel shifted and the platform shifted like this. Every single big bodybuilder was slowly but surely replaced by people whose sole focus was powerlifting and the obsession of the platform had became strength sports for a good reason. And that reason is that back in those days again, a lot of people were completely hopeless because they couldn't see gains. And when powerlifting came onto the scene, that changed entirely. If I were to give you like a metaphor for it, it's like if bodybuilders and fitness in general was in the dark, 
And then powerlifters and strength sports walked in and they were carrying torches with them. They bring the light and that light allowed people to see and to see the way and then to make progress. And this is the reason why the shift was so immediate and tremendous. These were the best years of YouTube fitness. The, the powerlifting era of YouTube fitness, when it was starting to become big and the hype was immense, was, in my opinion, the actual birth of this platform as we know it right now. The first few years don't really count. The reign of terror of bodybuilders was finally ended, and it was for the better. I cannot cite you a single thing that these people did that was actually done properly. Powerlifters did it much better on every single aspect. And I was also one of the people back then that was on these uh, bodybuilding forums or bodybuilding platforms and was following that type of advice. I vividly remember that when I started consuming YouTube fitness, for a few months afterwards, the only program I would run was a program designed by one of these bodybuilders that was pretty much machine only with only very high reps and focused on the pump. And I saw absolutely no results from it. And I know I'm not the only one. I know that many young men back then felt the same way, where they followed the advice of someone who was big and they got no results. And to also help you understand the caliber of men that we received advice from back then, picture Kali Mosso and then clone him and leave these clones to be and make them the sole source of information for lifters on YouTube. That's pretty much what was going on back then. We only received advice from people with that type of just low level of education with no insight. And it was absolutely garbage. That's the reason why also for the people who complain about Greg Doucet, Greg Doucet is a genius compared to the idiots, the, 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 the monkeys that we had back then to listen to and to look up to. You do not know what you missed. You don't know what you escaped. It was essentially just a bunch of guys who were just bloated out of their mind who look like lobsters, who could barely string two sentences without having to catch their breath, who just repeated endlessly, oh, just focus on the pump. Oh, just do machine, do 20 reps, do this. Avoid the bench press, avoid the squat. That's all the advice were given and it didn't work. And then powerlifting came into the scene and it changed everything. It revolutionized the entire industry because we finally had people that one looked human and again they didn't look like a mix of pit bull and lobster they were relatable they looked like us but also their advice made sense and this is around 2012 this is when the great revolution happened when a bunch of big names that are still on the scene nowadays made their first videos and these videos changed the game forever i can cite for example guys like alan throw like omar isof like candido these dudes, you need to understand, truly did something for us, for the lifting community, meaning that they started the actual fitness uh, ball game and, and group that we have nowadays. It's the reason why they have statuses as highly respected members of the lifting community. It's because everyone back then took advice from them. I can tell you for a fact that for me, I learned how to squat from Candido. I learned how to deadlift and to press from Alan Flo. I learned how to bench from Omar Izov. That's, that's sort of sad to admit because these guys are not bodybuilders. All of them are more skewed towards strength. I mean, Candido is a straight up powerlifter. He's a straight up competitive powerlifter. Alan Flo is a strongman slash powerlifter. Omar is a little bit more in between, but I've always seen him as a powerlifter. So young dudes like me who only cared about aesthetics and bodybuilding had to actually turn to sources outside of our sport for relevant information. It's, it's just, it's a catastrophic state of affair, but it's what had to happen. And it's the reason why these guys were so successful, by the way. They also had a very relatable feel and vibe to them. I don't know if, if you can relate to that, but I know that when I listened to these guys back then, it felt like a big brother was talking to me. Whereas all of these PD users, when they talk to their subscribers, they always talk down. It's like they're talking to their dogs or to like their, uh, the, the kid that they abuse. I've never liked that and I've never related to that. I always liked it better when it felt like I was put on, again, a stance of equality with the guy where he, he was just a normal dude lifting weights and he wanted to share information. That's exactly what these guys were. And it made all of the difference because a ton of people started to follow them. And to this day, a ton of people still follow them. To the point that 
again, people like me, who only like bodybuilding, ended up following more powerlifting channels than bodybuilding channels because that's where we got the best advice. Still to this day, when people in the comments ask me, hey, NH, who are your favorite channels? It's a little bit, uh, not shameful, but it's a little bit strange that I'm going to be linking 99% powerlifting channels. Right now, out of the top of my head, I can't even cite you three good bodybuilding channels on this platform for natural lifters, whereas I can cite you powerlifting channels until the cows come home. This was a direct result of this. is because, again, there was a shifting of the guard, and it was for the better. And you can see truly... In the psychology of the influencers that arrived on the scene, I already explained it to you, but look at Alan Floor, look at Candido, for example. These dudes have been making videos for 10 years plus. Look at their affect. Look at the way they behave on camera. They're still the same guy. They're still down to earth. They're still very nice. They're still able to joke about themselves, even though they have experienced massive success. Like Alan Floor has a million subs. He has his own gym. He has his own supplement or products, or whatever that he sells that he's very successful at. At no point did he let it get to his head. And it's a true testimony of the difference of psychology and mentality between powerlifters and bodybuilders. Even though I am a bodybuilder myself, I can only admit to the fact that bodybuilders, for the most part, are jerks. They're shitheads, and they tend to have an inflated ego, and the second they get this much success, it immediately makes them go insane. They are not prepared for that, and... Every single time a bodybuilding channel starts becoming irrelevant, you can put money on the fact that it's going to turn into shit. For some reason, strength sports are pretty much immune to that. And I have a theory for it. My theory is that because of the type of thing that you pursue based on the sport that you like, the results are going to be different when you actually make it. Because bodybuilding is, in a sense, a vain pursuit of the exterior, we end up with people who are rotten inside. And it just takes enough time for them to grow enough that they stop caring about hiding who they truly are and then they reveal what they always were, which is assholes, people who are just money hungry, people who don't care about helping people at all. Whereas people who powerlift look for something deeper because what they seek is a value that is not directly visible on their body. And I think it's the reason why they stay sane and they say good pe they stay good people, they stay nice people. It might sound... Uh, unimportant or just a psychological remark, but you have to understand that for a lot of people, it's the reason why they immediately started to shift their gaze towards powerlifting because it just felt like a, a more balanced community. And to this day, it still is. And that's the first in, uh, in truth aspect of powerlifting and strength sports that helped in the mugging of bodybuilding. That's how they came to replace bodybuilding influencers is because they were just better people, right? Straight up better people. But it goes deeper than that, because it's not just who they were. I've already told you, it's also what they preached. The advice that you would get from these pages would actually get you gains. And if you were like me, stuck following the advice of drug users, it was a revolution. And a little bit liberating, in a sense, to finally see results for your work. It might sound obvious to some of you back then who were not there during this period, But for a lot of people, the advice we received from these guys was brand new. Like, focus on the compounds. Don't do a gazillion reps. Think about your frequency so that you can progress. All of that stuff was the key to gains for us. But it, it just required someone to tell us. And that someone was the guys I, I, uh, I cited. It's the reason why to this day, I have a depth of gratitude towards these guys. Because even though we don't have the same pursuit, I learned from them. They got me started. And to this day, I still have a lot of fondness for them and for their channels. It's still a lot of good memories. Now, this difference between bodybuilding and powerlifting programs was so night and day that a lot of people who, again, were following those bodybuilding programs and saw no results, jumped on the powerlifting programs, saw results, and started to think to themselves, okay, I was wrong all alone, and also it seems to be that a powerlifting program produces better results for bodybuilding than a bodybuilding program. It's, it's an insane statement to produce, but it was correct, meaning that we were at a point in 2012 where if you wanted to look better, 
It was a smarter choice to subscribe to powerlifting channels and follow their training practices rather than to follow bodybuilding channels. That should be a mindfuck because it makes no sense. It's the equivalent of if I told you, okay, if you want to be a great architect, go take lessons with that engineer. And you tell me, well, he's going to teach me engineering stuff. Well, yeah, but since the teacher that was supposed to teach you architecture is only good at making pizza, you'll get skills that are actually much closer to what you want to achieve. So you'll actually achieve something. So a large portion of the population back then turned to powerlifting, saw the results they wanted, and never fucking looked back because they were like, okay, well, whatever these guys back there are, are selling, those, bu those bodybuilders that don't work, so I'm going to stick with these guys because I actually get results. It's the reason why programs like Starting Strength are so popular to this day and have reached a cult-like status. It's not a mistake, right? These people were not born in the cult of, uh, of Ripoto and they were not taught how to deadlift at three years old and to use the hip drive. It's just that they, at some point, said, okay, fuck it, let me try SS. They saw massive gains from it and they were like, all right, well, I'm going to ride or die for this guy because he got me my first gains. And it's hundreds of thousands of people. Like, this was not just a few scragglers here and there. It was pretty much the entirety of the community. It's the reason why the shift was so massive. Everyone abandoned the bodybuilding channels because they couldn't get you results at all. And everyone started to actually massively consume those powerlifting channels. This is why I call, this is what I call the golden age of YouTube fitness. These are the years that I regard with the most fondness. When I look back, these were the best years. To me, 2012 to 2015-16, best years of YouTube fitness, hands down. My favorite period was the Mark Bell era, where super training was big and their videos were super popular. And everyone loved these videos because it was everything everyone wanted. It was a group of, of guys who were relatable, who joked around, who gave good lifting advice and who allowed you to actually achieve the body that you wanted. They called themselves powerlifters, but no one cared about that because all that we cared about was actually to get something, to actually get gains. I mean, it should be obvious you lift weights, you want to get gains. Well, that's why people turned to strength sports and powerlifting because it's where the gains were. Now, that is the situation. That is the history of how the shift happened. The pendulum went from bodybuilding to powerlifting. And now the platform was powerlifting centric for a reason. It's because there was actually no other way. There was no other path you could follow if you wanted those gains. And it sort of continues nowadays because uh, I say that the pendulum swung and usually when the pendulum swings one side, it swings the other side at some point. It never really did. And the reason why I keep saying that, uh, that YouTube fitness is powerlifting centric is that to this day, it is still true. Back then, the programs of powerlifters were so effective that the people switched sides, which essentially turned powerlifting into the new bodybuilding. So if you wanted to get stronger, you followed powerlifters. If you wanted to get bigger, you also followed powerlifters. And it's still true today. In 2022, it is still true. It's more than 10 years afterwards. It's around 10 years afterwards. And that is still correct to this day. If you ask me, hey, should I follow this big bodybuilding page or this medium powerlifting page? I'm always going to direct you towards the powerlifting page because they will give you better advice to get big. As a natural lifter, it's always going to be the case. And it's the reason why we have this image as bodybuilders because we appear vain and we appear like a sport for normies for a reason. It's because we are. I know it's not going to please the bodybuilders on this page, which should be the majority of people. But it, we just have to face the truth. Like, this history is a reality. We cannot engage in revisionism. It's what happened. And it's what got us in the situation that we have today. We have terrible PR. The optics surrounding bodybuilding are garbage for reasons. Because we are garbage, right? It's, we can't just push the blame and say, oh, it's this guy's fault. I mean, we can. It's an explanation. But the results are still the results. There is a reason why... Most people who follow bodybuilding pages are normies and stupid, and why all of people who follow powerlifting pages tend to be more intelligent and tend to have better physiques. Guarantee you that if we were to take every single person following a bodybuilding page or a powerlifting page, and you pull them and you pin them against one another, you would find that the powerlifters have better physiques. 
because they actually know how to train and they actually care about training. There's a level of passion and spiritual engagement in powerlifting that was never there in bodybuilding back then and is still not there today. You go into most of these bodybuilding pages nowadays, they're devoid. They're, they're just empty husks. It's like watching an infomercial. You're not getting anything real or tangible. Powerlifters are able to produce things that are real and tangible because they care about helping people and they care about their crafts and about what they actually pursue in life. I have immense respects for powerlifters because I follow some of these pages that have 10k subs, even less than that, who make quality content and who grind out quality content nonstop for years. They don't get views, they don't get money, they don't care. What they care about is the perpetuation of powerlifting and giving good advice. It starts and ends there. Can you look at bodybuilders on this platform and tell me with a straight face that that's what they do? Keep in mind that all of this garbage we see nowadays, all of the clickbait, all of the titles that are completely fallacious, all of the shitty information that push people to follow gimmicky shit, all of that is bodybuilding. 100% of that is bodybuilding. There's a small fraction of it that came from powerlifting, but the vast majority of the toxic detritutes that come on this platform and that pollute it, bodybuilding's fault. So when people say that we are the problem, you can't deny it, it's true. The people that actually represent us are the problem because they are the reason why this platform has become the way it is. It's bodybuilding's fault. Powerlifting has always been the balancing good energy that actually brings good information. Informative content is synonymous with powerlifting. All of the gimmicky channels and all of that shit, it tends to always be linked to physique and aesthetics. Always. Every single year. Every single year. Since 2010, there is a new channel that pops out with a guy who is huge and on PEDs and who gives shit advice. Let's have a little quiz. Is that guy a powerlifter or a bodybuilder? Bodybuilder. Every single time. Why? Why do we always have to have all of the egoistico assholes that are going to just gain the trust of their subscribers and then sell them out? Why is it always us? Why does Paulifter get to have guys like Omar Izov, like Candido, who are good guys, funny guys, who are down to earth, and we end up with all of the people with a God complex? I mean, I've already told you, I think it's psychological, it's just that bodybuilding as a pursuit attracts that type of narcissist people, but shit, like, can we have one guy? Can we have one guy? Can we get one guy who gives bodybuilding advice who is not going to then become a sellout? Is it too much to ask? Like, powerlifters, can we borrow one of you guys? Like, it's like a draft. Can we buy one of you guys for just one season and then we'll give it back? It, it's a situation that I cannot stand because it's been going forever. I know exactly why it's been going on. But it still infuriates me because, in truth, I am really jealous of powerlifting. They have everything. They have everything. And it's what I just told you as well. You need to understand that all of the programming principles, all of the good training advice that you see on this platform, it all comes from powerlifting. They are the ones who bring the light into the shitty practices of bodybuilders. All of that stuff you owe to them. If you made progress on any of my programs, don't thank me. Thank powerlifting, thank strength sports, because every single strength sports, every single one from the get-go, from day one, had in their practice integrated principles of programming, every single one. Even something like calisthenic athletes, where people think, oh, they just do a ton of reps. Yeah, but they program. It's still an application of programming. Even something like strongman, where people think, oh, they just pick up heavy shit. Sit down with a strongman and look at their program. It's a, it's, it's a une machine de précision. Everything is where it's supposed to be. They train for certain events on a certain day with certain accessories. Everything is, is detailed. They know exactly what they do the second they step into the gym. They know what weight they're going to lift. They know the number of reps. It's perfect. It's perfection because they manage to rely the physical and the intellectual. Bodybuilders will just talk with the intellectual and then we wonder why the people that represent us, the big, the big influencers, are monkeys, they're baboons. Well, because they have no brains. But it's also because we never asked them to get a brain in the first place. Well, powerlifting gave us a brain. So thank you, powerlifters. Thank you for allowing us to live like actual humans and stop consuming our own feces. I actually deeply appreciate you for that. It's the reason why I actually give good advice is because I learned from the best. Now, you still see that to this day, 
The bodybuilders that refuse to integrate programming uh, principles that come from spring sports make shitty programs. It's always been true. And every single time I review one of these programs, I feel like I'm developing AIDS because it blows my mind how bad you can, how bad of an advice you can give to people when you refuse to take into account frequency, volume, and intensity. It's insane. It destroys the entire thing. It's like if you're trying to make pasta without pasta. It simply doesn't work. But it gets used. That's the truth. It's the reason why you could counter-argument my claim that uh, YouTube Fitness is powerlifting-centric by telling me that the vast majority of big channels are bodybuilding channels. But actually, no, it serves my point. You see, these guys might get the views, but they get views from normies and people who don't do shit and don't know shit. That doesn't count. I make a clear distinction between tourists and actual lifters. Powerlifters have lifting communities that watch them. They get, they get most views from lifters. Bodybuilders get most views from people who are just there to take a look, who are going to do three push-ups and then leave and come back in three months. That doesn't count. It's fluff numbers. It gets them money, sure, and they can sell plenty of supplements to these people, but they do not participate in our community. I refuse to welcome these people in the Church of Iron. They are not my brothers. They are stupid normies. And they don't actually matter because they don't even lift. So that's the thing. Again, I tip my hat to powerlifters, to all of the people who have integrity and who stay true to their principles. You will rarely see a powerlifter doing clickbait titles or inventing a gimmick, gimmicky version of the bench just to attract more viewers because they actually respect their practices. And that is uh, something that I look up to. I, I try to... I try to replicate the same values when I discuss bodybuilding and the, the, the decisions I take to try and recreate natural bodybuilding. Now, this reality also means that, as I said, most good bodybuilding channels and programs are created after powerlifting principles. Because, as I said, powerlifting became the new bodybuilding. So for all of the people who are going to tell me, well, there's this guy that gives good advice and he's a bodybuilder, or there's this guy, understand one thing. All of these dudes, what they did is... They, look at, they looked at powerlifting, they copy pasted all of the principles, then they put it on their channel and they called it bodybuilding. That's all they did. They didn't invent anything, they just copied the exact same methods that powerlifters did. That's it. That is, yes, bodybuilding because they call it that, but they didn't invent shit. Okay, it's not because they're good, they just had the same realization I had back then, and they sided with the people with a brain, which was a smart business move on their part. And so to this day, most people train like powerlifters, meaning that if you are someone with a decent physique and you have been training for a few years, there's a chance that if I look at your program, I'm going to see a ton of stuff that comes directly from powerlifting because it's what worked. Meaning that compared to the advice you would have gotten from bodybuilder back then, this is a step beyond. It's actually much better. You will see, however, that this has created some problems because this domination, this absolute mugging, of powerlifting has led a lot of people to believe that they were powerlifters. It was a sort of weird psychosis that I myself entered where we knew we were bodybuilders. We knew we only liked looks and aesthetics, but we couldn't get results from people who apparently also liked these things. Then we took advice from people who only care about strength, but we got immense results from it. And that fucked with our brains because keep in mind that a kid that did a bodybuilding bro split for a year and then did starting, starting strength for six months would have seen much better results, like tremendously better results. So then he sort of stuck, right? He's a bodybuilder, but he just did a powerlifting program and it got him looking better. That's very confusing to a lot of people. And you have to understand that powerlifting is not shy in its attempt to dominate and to actually convert people. It's, it's like lifting proselytism. Right? Powerlifting came in, they felt weakness, they sensed weakness on the, past, on the part of bodybuilding, they conquered, so everything was powerlifting from that moment on, and then they took people in. They recruited for their own group and their own church, as they should have, because that's how you grow a sport. But the issue is that in the making, they also confused a ton of people, because starting strength, strong lifts... All of these very famous programs that sell themselves as hypertrophy are actually strength programs. And I know that if you ask the creators, they'll tell you that they're strength programs. But you have to go back and look at the context of the period back then. Most people, actually the vast majority of people in YouTube fitness, only care about looks. 
it's those tourists I just described. But if we're faced with only the ability to follow a strength program to do better, they'll embrace that because that's what gets them results. So it led to the situation where a ton of people were funneled into powerlifting without their consent. Meaning that a guy like uh, Ripoto, for example, I guarantee you, indoctrinated a ton of people who did not want to be powerlifters, but who became default powerlifters because that was the only option available back then. And the issue is that these people eventually started to develop a lot of problems because there was a disconnect between what they truly wanted, which is to look good, and the programs they were following that were transforming them into strength athletes against their will. But I'm going to get back to that point a little bit later. Because I want to mention the PED question. I know that when you discuss that type of topic, when you discuss bodybuilding and powerlifting, you have a lot of people who bring up PEDs. Because it's true that PEDs have had a directly different impact between the two sports. It truly seems like powerlifting has been strangely immune to the damages of PEDs, while bodybuilding has been pretty much destroyed by it. Natural bodybuilding has been ravaged by PEDs to the point that it barely exists anymore. So a lot of people then ask, how is it possible? What is the difference between the two things? Well, I think that the first one is the psychological uh, formats. I think that, of course, a drug that will make you look better is going to have a much stronger impact on a sport that is supposedly only focused on making you look better. But it doesn't stop there, because the argument of saying that PEDs make you look better and they are more potent for aesthetics and not as much for strength doesn't stand, because they still do a lot for strength. You take PEDs, you're going to gain a lot of strength. That's also part for the course. It's part of the package. So it cannot just be biological. It cannot just be that PEDs and pro bodybuilding is infested with drug because it's bodybuilding. It's beyond that. I think that Above the biological reason, the actual reason why we have been damaged to this level is because of the cultural. And the cultural is what I told you already. When you get a guy who is a powerlifter, who has gotten very strong with his own natural body and natural ways, and then jumps on drugs, I have noticed that they have a tendency to just stick to what worked back then and maybe up the volume or frequency. They don't change the way they program entirely. Whereas with bodybuilders, it is extremely common for someone who is natural for years to change their training philosophy completely the second they start taking PEDs. And then they turn back and they give advice to naturals and it don't apply anymore. It's the reason why there's that disconnect. I can cite you a lot of, uh, of powerlifters who are on drugs who still give good advice, meaning that you could still listen to them as a natural powerlifter and get gains. Out of the top of my head, I cannot cite you one enhanced bodybuilder that gives good advice for naturals. Not once. Uh, I think the last one was John Meadows, where some of his advice actually applied, but he's done. He's gone. And so all is remaining and all is left is a sea of terrible information. Powerlifting never had actually to deal with that. So it also participated because there was a clear sense and, and, and perception that you could trust powerlifters. Even if they were on drugs, you could trust them. The trust was still there. And trust is incredibly important. If you can trust an influencer, then you know that you can actually follow what they tell you. It's the reason why, for me, I trusted Candido or Marizov blindly. Because, again, they felt like big brothers. And also, I was thinking to myself, well, they have no reason to lie to me. And they never did. Because their advice always applied. I was always getting results. So the trust was never broken. But if you're someone who's been following bodybuilding pages for years, how many times have you have your trust been broken? How many times have you been betrayed by someone that you followed? Three, four times? It's endless. And you know it's going to happen again. You know that it's the natural cycle of people who actually follow bodybuilding pages. You will get betrayed. If you've been following Alan Flo, he's never betrayed you. He never sold out. He never sold stupid gimmicky programs or supplements. He's just a guy who gives good advice. That's all I ever wanted for bodybuilding. Guys who, guys who give good advice. But of course, that's too much to ask because we are susceptible to pretty much any vices out there. Now, we can also discuss the box, the fact that powerlifting made box very popular, which means that a lot of skinny men saw results. is the reason why a lot of people are still attached to, to the GOMAD meme and they'll tell you that GOMAD plus SS is, is the key to building big muscles is because 
Compared to the advice they got from back then, yes, it is the key. It's better advice. And you still see that, by the way. The cyclical nature of YouTube fitness never ceases to amaze me, where there are things that are coming back now in 2022 that were popular in 2012. Like the entire focus on bulking and to not men gain, all of that I've seen already. It's the reason why I'm sort of, je suis blasé, because I've, it's, I've seen this shit. Like, history repeats itself to the point that I, an active participator, is just having constant déjà vus. Because I already know that. I just pronounce déjà vus à la anglaise, déjà vu. Sorry, my, I'm going to be excommunicated by the French, uh, the French government. So this is for all of the reasons that explain why YouTube became politically centric. It's simple. It's always summed up by the same, uh, the same quote. People between a weak horse and a strong horse will always prefer the strong horse. Politing is the strong horse. It is still the strong horse to this day. It's where most of the good advice comes from. It is where most of the good people are from. And therefore, it's where most of the people who want advice are going to go. You can also say the fact that uh, polyfters are just more friendly. Uh, it, it's something that uh, shocked me a bit because I knew, of course, that the toxicity of polyfting was much lesser compared to bodybuilding, but I never realized to the extent of that. Meaning that I remember making a video and someone in the comments told me that actually Instagram for polyfters was really great and they got good advice. And I couldn't believe it because uh, Instagram for bodybuilders is a cesspool. It's just an endless flow of infographics of teenagers flexing their chest and pointing at their nipples and then using a marker to do some crosses and shit and then doing like one arm fucking plate chest flies when they squeeze their muscles. It's hell. It's hell on earth. So I did what any good detective would do. I looked on the other side to see if the grass was actually greener. And lo and behold, it was. Meaning that even on Instagram, Bodybuilding gets mugged. We can't even win on Instagram. You look at polyfting on Instagram, it's a bunch of people who give good advice, who have a, a nice, healthy community with inside jokes. Can we get one thing? Can bodybuilding get one thing? Or do we, are we just doomed to lose on every single aspect? Even TikTok is the same. TikTok for polyfting is still TikTok, so it's still garbage and the equivalent of drinking bleach, but it's better than bodybuilding. Every single thing that bodybuilding does Polyfting does better, even building muscle. This is why we were to a situation to a point where people said that bodybuilding was a joke and that the only way for naturals were polyfting. If you were there back then, you remember that. People literally saying that bodybuilding only worked for PD users. That if you were natural, you could not be calling yourself a bodybuilder, that you had to be a powerlifter. As I said, the programs that apparently were followed by people for aesthetics actually turned them into wannabe powerlifters like starting strength. So the loop was in a sense complete. People were now full on on the powerlifting train and the powerlifting centric of YouTube fitness was cemented. It wasn't going anywhere. And to this day, I still think that we see the same situation, meaning that it still seems to be that there are two camps on YouTube fitness. There's the idiots, and then there's people who know how to train. And the idiots are bodybuilders. So you can put all of the, the Z's fanboys, all of the people who tell you that programming doesn't work or doesn't matter. They're all in the same box. The people who do bro splits. And then you have people who actually get results, who actually know how to train. And they're all for following powerlifting principles. All of them. I just want to stop on the, the programming doesn't work thing. I think that it's a good representation of the problem. It's not just that bodybuilders don't know how to think or are idiots, it's that they refuse to think. I think there's a large portion of people who entered fitness and entered this sphere without in their head the idea that they would have to actually be intelligent. They thought that they could just get big by moving their body through space. And the second someone told them that they actually had to think about things and to program, they got upset. And these people were faulted. These people will never get a good body in their life because they refuse to actually apply themselves. So in a sense, it's great, but it, it sort of chagrins me that the ones that make it tend to then transform into powerlifters. So of course, we bodybuilders end up with the rest. We end up with the garbage people that didn't make it. We end up with the... It's like when you pick a team for soccer 
And powerlifting got to pick like five times at first, so they got all of the good players and were left with all of the lame players. It's the reason why the communities are so different. And this is how strength became superior to looks. And to this day, again, you will still have people who will tell you that natural lifters need to focus on strength. If you actually want to look good, you need to focus on strength. That's the only way to do it. And in general, people also tell you that focusing on looks and aesthetics is stupid and you should be focusing on strength. It's much better. It's the way for natural lifters, blah, blah, blah. So essentially, aesthetics became a subdivision of strength. Like it's, a, it's an afterthought. You get strong and then you'll magically get big. Like that's how it works. A lot of people to this day present that like this. When people discuss the size versus strength dichotomy, there's two types of people that discuss it. There's the bodybuilder who is going to tell you that they are completely different and he's correct, but then he's going to give methods for size that are garbage because he's on PEDs. I cannot believe the popularity of these videos on the internet. You type size versus strength, you will see a ton of videos with millions of views, all of which give terrible advice. And then you have the powerlifter who is going to tell you that size and strength are the same thing, but he will e never ever tell you to, to train for, uh, for size. He'll tell you to train for strength and then it will magically turn into size. If you flip that on its head, it sounds ridiculous. Like if I told you, oh, you want to be strong? Okay, just get as big as possible. Like you'd look at me thinking, okay, that's not how it works. Like you're simplifying to the point where it makes no sense anymore. Well, equating the ability to gain size just by be becoming strong is just as stupid. But that's a topic for a different video. It's a topic that I'm going to develop more when I discuss strength standards and the damage they did to bodybuilding. To continue, as I said, this is why bodybuilding turned into a joke. And it's also the reason why nowadays no one respects hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is, as I said, an after afterthought. Everyone, for some reason, gets to discuss it, even if they have no tangible credentials, because since bodybuilding doesn't exist and muscles and size is just a byproduct of strength, well then, hypertrophy is just a free-for-all. Anyone gets to make videos about hypertrophy and no one bats an eye at it, and I am personally sick and tired of this shit because it's a direct, uh, it's, it's directly correlated and caused by this powerlifting centric YouTube fitness. It is because powerlifting is so dominant and because it is seen again as the supreme power on this platform that strength is widely respected as something that shouldn't be touched by people with no ability to actually grasp it as a concept. But hypertrophy, no one cares. Again, everyone can make, video about, make, make videos about it and it doesn't create any problem. It's a massive amount of disrespect, of devaluation. And it leads me to a piece of advice that I've received from a guy, I think seven or eight years ago, that stuck with me because this guy didn't know it. But back then he was being a visionary. He said something that perfectly represented the problem we are dealing with with YouTube fitness nowadays. And it was one simple advice that if it was applied throughout the years, it would have been better. Meaning that if people had actually listened to what he had to say and stuck to it, we would be in a situation where the quality of information on this platform would be much higher. This person is free kid. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he has a relatively small channel, but he's an OG of YouTube fitness. He's a powerlifter, a natural powerlifter, who's been doing his thing for, I think, 10 years. I, I remember watching videos of him years and years back. He was there at the start of this entire thing. And I've always held him in very high regards because even though he's a powerlifter, he always had a strong integrity and a strong love for his sport that transpired in the way he actually interacted with other people. And the, the advice he gave, and that stuck with me, is as follows. Stay in your fucking lane. He said it, and I wish that people actually did it. Because what he meant by it is, he meant that everyone should stick to what they know best and what they have a patient for, and that would be better for everyone involved. And he was correct. If powerlifters only spoke about powerlifting and strength, if bodybuilders only spoke about hypertrophy, if calisthenic athletes only spoke about pull-ups and push-ups and moving their bodies through space, this platform would be better. Because I don't know if you've realized, but that's not what we've been doing. Because powerlifting took over, 
they became, in a sense, able and they allowed themselves to talk about hypertrophy and size. And that opened Pandora's box because now everyone is doing it. Everyone is talking about hypertrophy. You go on the calisthenic channel, you're going to find five videos about how to get bigger biceps. You go on the powerlifting channel, you'll see five videos about how to get a bigger chest. This is not acceptable. That's not your lane. Your lane is not hypertrophy. But for some reason, these people now feel that it's perfectly admissible to start to drift into our lane. Meaning that you have all of the lanes and for some reason, we are the one where everyone is drifting into. It's like the equivalent of being a very small country surrounded by massive nations. And one day, this nation is going to take your swamps. And this nation is going to take your rivers. And this one is going to take your crops. Because you can't defend yourself. Because we've been mugged. Mugged and mugged at the same time. We've been dominated. When you dominate a country and we, when you colonize a country, you don't have to ask. You don't have to say, hey, can I take the gold? No, it's your fucking gold. Because you colonize the country, it's yours. Everything involved in the country is yours. So we have been, again, completely ravaged. It's the reason why no one respects hypertrophy. And the reason why I can go on the powerlifting channel and find videos about how to get bigger arms, even though the guy who makes the videos has absolutely no fucking idea. It's the reason why I also respect Free Kids so much. He's been making videos for 10 years. Okay, Go on his channel right now and find me a video where he's going to talk to you about getting bigger biceps. If you can find one, I will cut my left bow. You won't be able to. You know why? He only talks about strength. He stays in his lane. And as a response, as a continuation to that logic, he asks other people to stay in their lane. Why? Well, because if you only talk about the stuff that you know, then the information is quality. If you start to branch out, then you give bad information. It's so logical. But no one listened to him because nowadays... Every single channel does a million things. So you'll have a channel who make videos about how to be a better calisthenic athlete, how to be bigger, how to be stronger, how to be more endurant, how to be a good martial artist, how to peel potatoes. When does it stop? I mean, at some point, people need to admit that there are specialists and specialization for a reason. It's not possible to be good at everything. If you met a guy and he had a PhD in biology, a PhD in quantum mechanics, uh, an, an advanced ability to weld. You're either meeting someone who's a turbo genius or you're meeting a bullshit artist. And for the vast majority of the time, the people who know everything are bullshit artists. It's the pizza sushi place metaphor. If you go to a place that only sells pizza, there's a strong chance you're going to get good pizza because it's the only thing that they cook. You go to a place that makes sushi, there's a chance it's going to be excellent sushi because they only make sushi. Go to a pizza sushi place, get their sushi, and tell me how good it is. Most likely, it's going to be shit. Why? Because developing the ability to make both pizza and sushi is almost impossible because it takes two directly different types of specialization. But no one seems to get that on YouTube fitness. So, we have powerlifters talking about muscles. How to get bigger muscles? It's not your lane. Get out of my stupid... Get off my lane. Get off my lane. If I can extend the decency to not go into your lane, don't, tr don't start driving into mine. It's, it's the only thing I ask. It's the reason why I have never spoken about strength and I can vow solemnly that I will never sp speak about strength. It's the reason why also, even though I have hundreds of people who ask me, hey, how do you get stronger at this? How do you do this? Can you make a strength, pro strength program? I always say no. You know why? Because I respect strength. I respect strength, which also means that I respect bodybuilding. I respect my practice so much that I understand that I just do not have what it takes to talk about something I know nothing about. I also have the integrity to admit that it would be ridiculous for someone like me who benches 255 to give advice to people on how to get a bigger bench. To me, it's just logical. But I still see to this day people with toothpick arms who give advice on how to get bigger arms. And they get viewed by hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, are you that disconnected with reality that you allow yourself to give advice about something you know nothing about? But I know where it's coming from. It's coming from the powerlifting-centric nature of YouTube fitness. Because these people have been dominating for so long, because there is no competition, because in terms of intellectual abilities, strength sports are here and bodybuilding is here, 
well, they just do whatever they want because no one is going to oppose them. So I say, to preserve the purity of the information we give on this platform, to stay in your lane, right? If your channel is about both strength and hypertrophy, that's cool. You're going to give mixed advice. It's not going to be, to be the best for either. It's going to be the best for both. So people who want a mix of both should follow your advice. But I cannot stand when people pretend that they know everything and they can give perfect advice on everything because it's simply not true. And that situation that was created by powerlifters is what left to the Afflinex scenario and the Afflinex catastrophe. For the people who don't remember, Afflinex, before he started doing what he does now, was a guy who gave advice about rehab. That's all he did. Back then, his old videos was helping people rehab. And then he slowly started to drift towards athleticism. So rehab and helping people becoming better athletes. Okay, that's when the gimmick train like an athlete came from. Cool. But then, out of fucking nowhere, he started to paint his body and mark his biceps with markers and give advice about bodybuilding. And never, no one said shit. No one has said anything. You know why? Or well, because bodybuilding is a joke. No one respects hypertrophy. We're just an afterthought. So he got to do it. And no one, again, batted an eye. But because that guy got more and more subscribers, he did what everyone does, which is branch out more and more. Because that's how you get subs, by the way. It's the reason why many people give advice about things they know nothing about. It's not that they're completely delusional megalomaniacs. It's also because they understand that it's a small business move. If I only talk about bodybuilding, I only get people on my channel who care about bodybuilding. But if I start talking about bodybuilding, powerlifting, strongman, athleticism, how to be a better boxer, how to be a better swimmer. Now, I have all of these communities that are going to come on my channel. So I multiply my outreach. It's the reason why Afrinex did that and why so many YouTubers that have absolutely no room or ground to stand on to talk about these topics start to branch out as well. It's for money. It's because it attracts people. But with Afrinex, what I found very interesting is that he started getting backlash when he started to discuss strength because... The second he started to give advice to people to develop their strength, the powerlifting community on YouTube immediately jumped into action and said, no, 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 you can do whatever you want with the other things, but strength, don't touch it. And they were correct in that endeavor because he gives garbage advice for people who want to build strength. But he also gives garbage advice for people who want to do bodybuilding. I don't know if you remember, I reviewed one of his programs. And I didn't review a second one because I'm pretty sure that I developed AIDS from reviewing the first one because it was terrible garbage. It was completely terrible. Well, it was the same for strength. All of the shit advice that he gave to people that got injured or just plateaued forever comes from the fact that he tried to, again, overstep his boundaries, but he got checked. Polyfters came and they checked him. They were like, no, no, you don't. They started to dig things that he did, the fake weights, etc., and they just put him in his place. It didn't work, sadly, because he's too big to fail, but at least there was an attempt. At least they tried to protect powerlifting and strength. Bodybuilders never even did that. But what I want to ask is this, to powerlifters. You see what it feels like when someone, a clown like Afinex, starts giving advice to people when he knows nothing about it. Can you maybe take that same energy and put it towards yourself and not do the same thing to bodybuilders. I mean, I know you dominate us. So it's not even me trying to just go to war with you because we can't win. You already are on top. But out of decency, like, please, can you stop? Because you really give shit advice. Most hypertrophy advice from powerlifters is terrible. So for your subscribers, I think it would be a good thing to take a page out of Free Kids book and stay in your lane. It's not mean to say that, I think. If we all stayed in our lanes, we would go faster and it would also be more secure, right? There wouldn't be car crashes all the time. It's just something that I'm throwing out there. But it's the reason why this platform is suffering. It all started from powerlifting dominating everyone and strength sports in general because bodybuilding is the ugly duckling of this entire, entire scenario. Everyone talks about hypertrophy. The only ones that don't are strongmen. I don't know if they're going to start doing it as well. I hope not. But that shows also that, again, powerlifting protects their sport viciously. The second you touch strength, you get fucked up, and that's for a good reason. They understand that this is what saves your sport and your practice and the purity of the group. And by the way, to go back on the Afrinex thing, 
There's a very easy way to tell the difference between someone who's an actual lifter and part of the iron court and someone who's a normie. A normie is someone who so affinex lifts fake weights and still respects him, and an actual lifter is the guy that turned his back on him the second he saw that. Because if you don't have a respect for strength, then you will think that it's acceptable what he did. But he, if you actually know what it means, and you actually respect strength and lifting in general, then you will have lost all respect for that guy. That is the difference. And I want to reiterate that I think that if you have respect for your own practice, like strength, you will have also what it takes in you to expand that decency to other things. For me, I don't care about strength. I know it makes people insane when I say that. I only care about size and aesthetics. But because of that, I recognize that there is beauty and there is passion and there is nobility in the pursuit of strength only. This is the reason why also, again, I will never ever talk about strength on my channel. Now, let's see how much time we have left. All right, well, I'm going to continue a bit and we'll see if I have to cut and then start again later. So, this is leading us to one of the measures that needs to be put in place. A measure that, in line with Polyf to protect our sport, needs to be implemented for people like me, natural bodybuilders, to protect our practice. And that is the systematic hunt of any and every people that try to put down bodybuilding, that try to give bad information, or that are just simply themselves stuck in what I call the powerlifting purgatory. As I explained to you, if you look back at 2012, there were a lot of people, me included, who were following powerlifting advice and who were seeing results from the, for, for the first time and who started to lose sight of what we were, meaning that we started to lose sight of the fact that the only thing we cared about was aesthetics and we were sort of convinced by people and influencers that what we really cared about is powerlifting. But that never really stuck. And for me, I remember that I trained following these powerlifting principles for a long time. It got me gains at first, but then I was plateauing and I didn't know where I was going because I had lost my direction. I didn't know what I wanted. And it took some reflection on my part to then find my way and to pivot back towards natural bodybuilding. But I know a ton of people that never did. And these people became specters of sorts, meaning that they're not really powerlifters, but they're not bodybuilders either. And I have noticed that these people are also other victims of the powerlifting-centric nature of YouTube fitness. These are the ones that I call the strength coppers. If I were to describe what a strength copper is, I would say that they're the bastard children of this version of powerlifting that is trying to do everything, but that doesn't have the ability to get them to where they want to go because these people are in reality closeted bodybuilders. At heart, the only thing they care about is looks, but because of the entire thing they went through with the betrayal of bodybuilding channels and the fact that powerlifting channels gave them good advice that got them going and got them their first gains, they can never actually emancipate themselves from it. And I spent enough time in that state to tell you that I understand perfectly the psychology of these people. The hatred that they have for bodybuilding and all of that projection actually comes from their inner desire. And it's funny because I have relationships with polyfoods on this platform actually. And I tend to be in good terms with them, meaning that even though I'm a, pol I'm a bodybuilder and they're a powerlifter and we do completely different things, we can still respect each other's endeavors. Of course, we make fun of each other, but that's because we are brothers in a sense. We, we, we are going to have back and forth. It's part of the fun. These guys are not doing that for fun. They're not doing that for trolling. They truly detest bodybuilding to a great extent. For someone who actually were to only care about strength, I can tell you for a fact that aesthetics is an afterthought. It's not something they care about much. All of the top body, uh, polyfters I know, the natural polyfters I know, yeah, they don't want to look terrible and they'll do a few things here and there to look better, but that's not their main pursuit. Their main pursuit is strength. That's all they care about and that's all they do. There is no space in their heart for hatred of bodybuilders. They don't even think about that. All of that hatred comes from these power coppers, these people who pretend to be powerlifters as an excuse. They actually utilize strength as an excuse for their lack of results in terms of muscular gains. 
And these people are actually extremely toxic. I know that the powerlifting community does have a reputation for being toxic and being elitist, but I can tell you one thing. The vast majority of that toxicity doesn't come from actual powerlifters. It comes from people pretending to be powerlifters. It's different. I know that for me, for myself, for example, in the gym, every time I would meet someone who was a strength athlete, this guy was always the nicest dude in the world. And it's always from these types that I got the best advice. I learned how to front squat from an Olympic weightlifter who was stopping at my uni gym because he had a competition in my state and the guy taught me how to front squat and he was a great dude and to this day I still front squat and I make gains from it. That's the type of relationship you can expect with actual powerlifters. I remember another guy who was a massive bearded dude like heavy powerlifters tend to be who always called me for a spot because he knew I was strong enough to save his ass on the bench and the squat. We had a perfectly fine and, f and comical and friendly relationship because even though we were in different lanes, even though we didn't live in the same house, we appreciated each other because we knew that we were both brothers in iron. We were still, in a sense, lifters and that was enough to unite us. All of these guys, do strength copers, are not lifters and I have noticed several things that they all have in common. They tend to be people that were disappointed in bodybuilding because they didn't get the results that they expected, because they thought they were going to look like their favorite influencer and that never happened, etc, etc. Then they embraced powerlifting and finally saw some results, but it was mainly strength, meaning that they mainly got stronger, they didn't get much size from it, and so even though it was still results, it wasn't exactly what they wanted, but because it, they thought it was the only thing they could actually accomplish, they got stuck in a loop and they never actually emancipated themselves from that, whereas I did. I know that for me, I was like this, while I was training like a powerlifter and I didn't know why I wasn't progressing, but at some point I asked myself, okay, surely there's a way out of this and I found it. Some people never find it and because they don't, they take their, their anger out at bodybuilders. And for all of these people, I want to say one thing and one thing only. You need help. And that help I'm going to try and provide, but it's mo it mainly is going to take your own ability to reflect and change yourself. Because I can tell you that there are hundreds of thousands of people who are like this. It's not just one or two guys, because these are direct results of the powerlifting era. There are guys just like me. There are guys who have been lifting for years and years and years, who never quit, but they are just, in a sense, ils pédalent dans la smoule. They're not going anywhere because they don't have a direction. And from them, you will hear stuff like bodybuilding is gay. I have never understood why these people are so hell bent on correlating bodybuilding with a sexual orientation. I mean, I get that making jokes about having a thong and being old up on stage is funny, but there are a lot of sports that do really gay shit and no one calls them out. Like, look at wrestling. Wrestling is super fucking gay. Sometimes you end up with your face in the guy's crack and you try to push to pin him on the ground. That's, that's not gay. What about squats or for powerlifting? When you spot a guy on the squat, you're literally close to his crotch to the point that your dick almost touches the guy's ass. That's not gay. I mean, you can find iterations of gayness, quote unquote, in every single sport. But these guys are hell bent on only seeing it in bodybuilding. And to me, that's also just out of resentment. They hate the sport so much that they correlate it with something that they also hate, which tends to be homosexuality. So they correlate the two. You also have to keep in mind that the phone police that I made a full video on already also comes from that. We can thank powerlifters for the phone police because they didn't used to exist back then. In 2010, 11, people lifted however the fuck they wanted and no one cared. Like you, you could post a squat on YouTube and no one was going to break your balls or bust your balls about, about the depth. Nowadays, try posting a video of you squatting. If you don't go literally to the point where your armstrings touch your calves, people are going to say you're not going to depth. Why is that? Well, it's powerlifting. This comes directly from the obsession of depth and of rules and regulations that powerlifting brought onto the scene. But again, that doesn't apply to bodybuilding. I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but it doesn't matter how you grow your legs in bodybuilding. If you do half squats and they grow, that still works. There's not a judge in the gym that is going to look at you squat from a distance and then if you don't go to depth, he's going to show up to you with a, a notebook with written zero on it and tell you that you won't get any gains. But if you listen to some of these power coppers on the internet, 
that's what you would come to believe, that they think that hypertrophy is correlated with rows. To them, if you, for example, do a pull-up and it's not a full range of motion pull-up, you will get zero gains from it. Like, I have heard people say that, that it's a zero. Like, nothing is going to happen. Because you didn't do it the way it's prescribed, then you're just out of luck. Like, nothing happens from it. This is stupid, of course, but you would be surprised with the amount of people who think like this. And again, it's the reason why I say it's not just powerlifting, it's every single strength sports. Every single strength sports at some point became infiltrated and corrupted by people who pretended to care about strength, but actually they only cared about strength so that they could make fun of size, which also means that they never actually cared about strength. It's the reason why I detest these people so much. It's not just that they are going to bust my balls. It's also that they have absolutely no respect for powerlifting because they are not powerlifters. So that's for the form police. And maybe, yes, the form police was a good thing because we did live like complete idiots back then. But I don't know if the new iteration of the form policing is any better because nowadays you have people who will literally limit themselves or train a certain way because a group of men on the internet has told them they have to do it without realizing that these guys don't know anything. They're just saying that because, again, they're trying to cope. They're trying to cope with their terrible physiques. You also have the claim that bodybuilding is 100% genetics that I've heard a lot from dudes who tend to be in their 20s and 30s who have terrible fucking physiques and who then have decided that it's because of their genes. Like, it's not because you've been on starting strength for six years and you only consume milk. No, it's because you somehow don't have the genetics to look good. Well, that's, of course, nonsense, but it's also the type of cope you can expect from these people. And I have a method to actually detect these guys. Even without them having to open their mouth or give their opinion, you just have to look at their profile picture. I have found that there is a surprisingly high amount of people on YouTube fitness that pretend to care about strength, but if you look at their profile pic and if they had a public channel and you look at their thumbnails, it's only pictures of them flexing and their profile pic is them flexing. That tends to be a dead uh, it tends to be a dead giveaway that these people don't actually care about strength. What they care about is aesthetics. And the proof is that usually when you show someone a picture of you, when you use a picture for Facebook, for example, you're going to use a picture of you doing something that represents you. Or you're going to take a picture of you that makes you look the best. So if you're on YouTube fitness and you interact with other lifters, the picture that you show is going to show who you are as a lifter. So if your picture is you deadlifting, there is a very strong chance that what you care about is strength. And if the picture is you flexing a bicep, there's also a very strong chance that you're just bullshitting yourself and that you only care about aesthetics. That might be a good way to self-diagnose yourself if you are suffering from power copying. Because I can tell you that it's quite obvious. When you see someone who clearly cares about looks, but has lied to themselves for so long that they have now started to believe that strength is their true pursuit, it's immediately evident. And it's quite sad because, in truth, the only person you're hurting is you. I know that for me back then, I was like that. I wasn't as obnoxious, but I was like that. And I know that it was keeping me in a place where I didn't want to be because I, I wasn't a powerlifter. And I blame all of these powerlifting programs that, again, funneled a ton of people into strength who never recared in the first place and then woke up one day and thought, holy shit, I've wasted years of training because they were never given the freedom to actually decide for themselves because, again, there was no other option. Well, I'm telling you that there is an option. It's just going to take you being honest with yourself. And again, I have a very easy way to tell. You need to look at what makes you feel great, what makes you feel passionate. You need to look at what ignites the fire in you. If for you, the best pleasure in life, the best pleasure in the gym is to get a PR, chances are you care about strength more than you care about looks. If, on the other hand, what you like the most is seeing a new muscle or a new vein or flexing in the mirror, then I think, in my opinion, that you care about looks. I can tell you for a fact that for myself, PRs mean nothing to me. Like five pounds on the bar, okay, cool. It's a number, I don't care. But if I flex in the mirror and I look amazing, there's something that happens. It's a feeling of elation, of joy, that only can happen if you follow your true calling and your true passion. Of course, you can sort of like both at the same time, but I've always find that there is one that, is, that you're going to prefer. There's always one that is going to actually be more permanent in your life. 
And for those that end up not following that, well, a life of misery is ahead of us because the powerlifting-centric children, those power copers, tend to also be fat and weak. It is insane the amount of people that end up packing as much fat on their frame as possible to get strong and then are going to point the finger and make fun of other people for not being as strong. It's something that I've seen times and times again. It's the mugging meme. But what these people don't get is that the mugging meme is just that. It's a meme. Like, again, take Free Kid, for example. Free Kid is a very strong dude. When he makes his mugging videos, where he mugs people, he's stronger than them. Do you think he's being serious? Do you think he's sitting at home with his coffee thinking, hmm, I truly showed them that I'm the superior being? Fuck no. He knows he's stronger than us. That's part of the joke. That's what makes it funny. But you have people who do it unironically. Well, they'll come to you like they weight 60 pounds over you and they'll tell you, oh, I bench more than you. Who gives a fuck? And also, why do you think it makes you a better person? I have met people who thinks who think it makes them better people. And it's where the how much do you bench bro thing comes from. It's again that powerlifting centric mindset of strength being the only thing that matters. But what you need to understand is that for a powerlifter, strength is going to be the only thing that matters for them. They don't try to push that onto others. They're not going to try and make other people feel bad for not actually trying to fulfill the same type of goals that they have. That ends up to me being only cope projection. These are the type of people, again, that are going to present themselves as powerlifters so that they can pretend that they don't care about aesthetics, but then they end up only consuming bodybuilding con uh, content and being hateful for no reason. There is a problem here. Like, imagine if someone who calls themselves a bodybuilder only consumed the content of powerlifters and then made fun of them for not being aesthetic. You'd think that this guy has a problem. Well, look back and look at the tens of thousands of people who are behaving exactly like that on the internet. Strength is not a joke. And I understand that these people were placed in this situation against their will, but at the end of the day, they're just giving powerlifting a bad name. And so it is the job of powerlifters to actually call them out. Because the issue you see is that if I call them out, like I'm doing right now, these people are going to, again, turn the tides on me and tell me that I'm saying that because I'm weak and I'm coping. And I'm hating on them because they're strong. I don't really have a method out of that because it's a flawless strategy. But for your own sake, I think it would be a good thing to do. Because, as I said, throughout the years, I have seen a ton of people in, bodybuild, uh, in powerlifting and in calisthenic athlete channels who have started to become like this. They're not really one of the, your own. They're a parasite. And the only thing that they're doing is they're fragilizing your community. They're bringing toxicity into the community. And then they're going to bodybuilding channels and they're making you look bad. Maybe you don't care, but I think it's important because it damages our relationships. Likewise, for me, for example, if I saw a bodybuilding doing the same and calling polyfters fat, well, I would also have to say something because it would be idiotic. But I've noticed that it, it never really happened. Because as I presented, the bodybuilding-centric portion of YouTube was just there at the start when there was no other alternative. It never really lasted long. So usually when you see a bodybuilder hating on powerlifting, it's in response to the fact that we got dominated. It's not really hatred, it's just that we're being crushed and it's getting a little bit tiring. So we're trying to fire back with anything we have, so you'll have, a, you'll have people who call powerlifters fat. Well, I can tell you that yes, some powerlifters are fat, but it serves a purpose. However, power copers are fat for no reason. These are the dudes that you'll see at the gym who have a belt 24-7 and who walk around with a jug of water. This guy is in every single gym. And every single time, he's not a powerlifter. He's a power copper. The reason why he's pretending to be uh, actually en uh, en entangled with strength is because he has no other option. He can't look good. He doesn't want to actually put in the effort to look good. So he retreats back on what he believes to be just a secondary choice. But that's also the reason why I'm saying that these people are making a joke out of powerlifting. All of which came from the fact that powerlifting dominated for too long. It's creating its own destruction in a sense. The only group that I'm seeing sort of preserved from that is Strongman. Strongman is still a pretty fertile, pretty healthy community. But I have noticed some people who are starting to be Strongman copers. So the proof is that the infection is spreading. And the only way to actually prevent the infection... I think, is to excommunate these people. I know that they call themselves powerlifters, but we both know that they're not. So just shoot them away. 
Because these guys are not lifters. The only thing they do is they bring toxicity into our environment and they don't even train. So I hereby declare, as the Duke of Noble Nadis, that these people are not welcome. They can go play in the sandbox with the tourists of YouTube Fitness. They'll feel, they'll, they will feel right at home with the bodybuilding normies, right? They, these people have the same values. They don't want to train. So they can go do their own thing and leave us alone. And by us, I mean people who are serious about lifting, right? Even if you're a strong man, even if you're a calisthenic athlete, I don't care. If you're natural, you're my brother. We don't do the same thing, but I respect you. And I also know that if you are true to yourself, you're going to also respect me. We'll make fun of each other, but that's part of the brotherhood as well. So that's what that was for the power coppers. These people need to be destroyed as soon as possible. And for their own sake as well, as I said, stop pretending to care about strength when the only obsession you have in your heart is physique. Just accept that you have a passion and embrace it. I know that the worst part about these people that I found, and I'm going to end on this for this segment, is that they normalize the behavior within the group. So they'll make, again, groups and communities, and then what they'll do is, if one of them tries to express themselves and say that they actually care about physique, the other ones will call him gay, or they'll say, oh, no, you can't, and bodybuilding is for, is for people who don't train hard or who don't know how to train. They're creating their own groups of misery, in a sense. It's quite shocking. And it brings up a paradoxical situation, a scenario where, as I told you, I'm in extremely good standing with actual powerlifters, but these guys detest me. Actually, it's a long story short, but for a long time, I had a group of these guys who attempted to get my channel taken down by mass flagging it. And so I did a little bit investigating, and I found out that these guys were Bugenhagen subscribers who also hated Bugenhagen because he looked good, but had this weird schizophrenic relationship with him because he's also strong and who apparently detested me because I was going against what they were preaching. And also, I believe that I was starting to make them feel bad about themselves because I was, in a sense, presenting the actual pursuit of bodybuilding as being opposed to powerlifting. These guys are ridiculous, but they need to realize it to actually fix themselves. And I find it particularly interesting that the fanboy endeavors were focused around Bugenhagen because he's exactly what they want. Meaning that they pretend to care for him because he's strong, but I don't think that's true. I think that the vast majority of these guys who worship Bugenhagen worship him because of his size. And actually, the same people, as I said, don't actually like him. They distrust him. They think he's not natural. And the reason they will cite for his non-natural status is not his strength. It's his size. So it, we go full circle. The entire thing that they actually, they actually care about is size, but they lie to themselves. And so they're coping. It is not a healthy coping mechanism. They need to do better. They need to actually fix themselves. Now, once you fix yourself and you admit to yourself that your true passion is actually bodybuilding and physique, you can start training correctly. And that is the last segment of this video, because as I've told you, Powerlifting took over and everyone started training like a powerlifter. But the problem is that it's not a good thing. It's a great thing for powerlifters, but for us bodybuilders, it's not. And it's the reason why natural bodybuilding has remained stagnant for so long is because we are not following the right principles. I told you that starting strength is a great program compared to the previous bodybuilding programs that were available on the platform. But in truth, in the current context of YouTube Fitness, starting strength is a terrible fucking program. It is atrocious, at least for hypertrophy. It truly is not good. It is not a good novice program to start your lifting journey on because it's too skewed towards powerlifting. It simply doesn't work. And most powerlifting influencers, the guys that I actually talked up to, that I actually presented to you as good influencers, they are good influencers for strength. They give great strength advice, and back then, they were the only resource available for size as well, so they were the only actual choice. But nowadays, we can say objectively that the advice they give is not the best. I've reviewed programs by Omar. I've reviewed programs by Candido. Love the guys to death, but their advice for hypertrophy is just not on point. And I think that it's correlated in their physiques. Some are not going to like what I'm going to say right now, but they don't have balanced physiques. I think the one that has the most balanced physique is Omar, and even he 
has a strong imbalance between the torso and the arms. And that comes from one thing and one thing only, the training. It has nothing to do with genetics. He wasn't born torso dominant. It's just that for having reviewed his programs and Kenito programs, there is a massive focus on the big three that tend to build the trunk of the body. And there is almost no focus on the arms. I remember reviewing the Kaizen program and wanting to blow my brains out because I realized that they had RPE and intensity for everything except isolation for the arms. So isolation for the arms, it was like, yeah, just pick up any weight and just do reps. That is the reason why it's not good advice for bodybuilding. But because in a lot of people's head, these guys were the only ones that were giving good advice. It's very tough to emancipate ourselves from them. We can do better than that, right? The advice they give for strength might be good. For hypertrophy and bodybuilding, it's mediocre. We can do better. And it's what I'm trying to do with this channel. I'm trying to recenter the advice. I'm trying to give pure bodybuilding advice because these guys, without their consent, I will admit to that, gave hybrid advice because they were the only resource. They spoke about strength, but it started to be skewed towards hypertrophy and without realizing it, they embraced it. And a ton of channels nowadays are like this, where at first glance, you think to yourself, okay, that's a bodybuilding channel. But when you dig, you realize that it's actually a powerlifting channel in disguise. It's just, it just has the appearance of bodybuilding because it attracts people. But the advice you will get from these channels is not the best because you cannot give top, tip top advice for both strength and hypertrophy. It's not possible. And usually they tend to mix the two, as I already explained, because they see hypertrophy as a joke and a byproduct, which it is not. There are a few exceptions, however. There are a few influencers that are focused on strength that are massive as well, that are big, but they all tend to be on PEDs. And that, that grinds my gears because it truly shows the level of delusion and unawareness that some people can reach. Or you'll have a guy who did powerlifting training for years and years and had a semi-decent physique, then he jumps on drugs, becomes huge, and then starts making hypertrophy based video. It's like, my brother, you, you became big of the drugs. Your programming is not the reason why you became big. So why do you now make videos about how to get big biceps when your biceps look like pillows, water pillows, before you started taking trend? How is that acceptable? That's the only moment where I really have a bone to pick with some of these powerlifters because some of them don't know any better. As I said, they're just dominating. So they're drifting into our lane because they don't even notice we're here because they're driving a Hummer and I'm driving like a tiny Muppet or something. But these guys do it on purpose. And I'm seeing that more and more of dudes who jump on drugs, become huge, and then start talking about bodybuilding. Stop it. I mean, it's, it's again, it's not doing any service to your subscriber to do that. I don't know if they actually recognize or understand the massive hypocrisy that they are being culprits of when they do that shit. Maybe they don't realize it. As I said, maybe they're not aware. But you need to understand, you who is watching right now, that powerlifting training isn't optimal for hypertrophy. So we need to reinvent. And that's for a very simple reason. I'm not going to go into it too much because as I said, I have a video on strength standards that are going to focus entirely on this topic. But the reason why you cannot train for a bodybuilder, just like you would train for a powerlifter is simple. These are not the same thing. Meaning that powerlifting is a sport. It's a sport that is based off of performance where you have to develop your athleticism to perform in the big three and it's based off of objective criteria. That is powerlifting. Bodybuilding, on the other hand, is an art. What is the difference between a sport and an art? A sport is judged via objective criteria. An art is based off of subjective criteria every single time, okay? And on top of that, of course, the focus is entirely different. In bodybuilding, we only care about the aesthetics. You will never be on stage and have a judge ask you to do 15 push-ups. You just have muscles. They don't care how they actually came to be on your body, which is also the reason why PEDs destroyed bodybuilding so much. It's the difference. This means that, yes, the methods that we will use will be similar in nature because, yes, you still have to do resistance training, but the way we're going to go about it is different. You can have one tool and use it two different ways. It's, it's, it is... At this point, we are at a level 
Well, powerlifting is so dominant that there is an entire area of methods of training and even lifts that have been stamped powerlifting. Like, for example, bench squat and deadlift. Nowadays, these lifts are seen as powerlifting lifts, but these lifts were being used by bodybuilders before powerlifters used them. Natural bodybuilders already did these lifts. There is a, it coincides, right? Powerlifting started to espouse these lifts at a moment where they were already being used for hypertrophy. So it's important that you understand that just because you do these lifts doesn't, mean, doesn't make you a powerlifter. I know that on my channel, I still have people to this day who come on it and ask me if I'm a powerlifter or ask me how much I bench because they see me deadlift. It's a deadlift. I mean, it's used in competition by powerlifters, but it doesn't make me one. Also, I must say that I am amazed at the, 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 the sheer power of, of, of subjugation that powerlifting has. We are at a point where when someone talks about programming and does compound movement, people immediately assume they're a powerlifter, even if his name is natural hypertrophy. I have people to this day who come to my channel thinking, I'm going to give them powerlifting resources. Why? Or because I train in a fashion that doesn't resemble what bodybuilders do. So immediately I'm being correlated with powerlifters. I don't take offense to that, but it's truly just to show you where we are. We are at a point where if you train intelligently, this must mean you're a strength athlete because there is absolutely no way a bodybuilder will ever train intelligently. Well, I say that we can. We can train just as intelligently as powerlifters. As I told you, I used to be jealous of powerlifters for the community they had and the fact that they had actually intelligent influencers that were leading the movement. But I'm finding now that we can have that as well. We just need to keep an eye on the goal. The goal differs. It's between size and strength. Our is size. As long as you focus on that, you will find that the methods that you might have employed coming from powerlifting simply do not apply. And as I said, yes, you can be somewhat of both. Yes, it's possible to have a channel that does a tiny bit of strength, a tiny bit of hypertrophy. It's possible. It's not pure, but it's possible. However, when you try to think, when you try to advance the idea that you can get one and then get the other one again as a byproduct, as something that's just going to happen, that's when I have an issue. And this is when I'm going to introduce the topic of power building. I feel about power building the same way that Olympic athletes feel about CrossFit. It's like a distant cousin that is like slightly mentally impaired that you're a bit ashamed of, but they're family, so you're supposed to pretend that you like them. Well, I have nothing but disdain for power building because it's a fucking meme. It's a joke. It means nothing, even just the term power building. So you're building power, but power building means that you're an Olympic weightlifter because you're building the quality that would make you a better lifter in terms of performance. So where is the bodybuilding in this? You can't just take building and slap it at the end of something and it works, but that's exactly what this power, uh, power building shit was. And to remind you, this powerlifting meme came about around the time when the powerlifting centric of YouTube was already well established. And I think that it's people who realized that the gig was up and that people were starting to realize that training like a powerlifter was not going to get you the results and the physique of a natural bodybuilder. So they came with that uh, actual semantical trap to get people to buy into their programs again. Because most powerbuilding programs are essentially compound movements and then isolation. You know what that's called? It's called bodybuilding. It has nothing to do with power building. It's the way natural bodybuilders always trained. It's insulting to give it that name. And on top of that, the worst thing too is that sometimes, sometimes these power building programs end up striking gold simply because again, they make you train like a bodybuilder should train. But sometimes it's done right insulting, meaning that they'll take a powerlifting program, then they'll slap four sets of shrugs and they'll say, hey, here, that's a powerlifting program. So you're going to buy it, right? Like, this is how low respect bodybuilders get that we, influencers, make zero efforts for us. They won't even attempt to make a bodybuilding program. They'll just take one of their existing templates, 
put a few set of curls and then try to sell it to us because they know that we're desperate for something that is going to actually work. This is why I say also that anyone who uses the word power building unironically is either in on the entire scam or doesn't understand that it's a joke, that at the end of the day, it means absolutely nothing. I detest it. But it's not surprising that this thing, this manipulation worked so much because most people on this channel who say that they are bodybuilders, who care about being bodybuilders, train like pure powerlifters. Like your programs, and I've reviewed a ton of your programs, tend to just be powerlifting programs with a few differences here and there. So you'll slap a few set of curls and then you'll be good. Well, the problem is that if you train your arms and your biceps as an afterthought, you are going to have biceps that look like afterthought. They're not going to be remake, re remarkable at all. And that's also when you see the in a sense, distinction between noble muscle groups and the ones that people don't care about. Because again, a powerlifter will train the prime movers. So he'll train certain muscle groups and not others. But for bodybuilders, we need to train every muscle group that we want to see grow. That's not the reality of what you see in most programs. Most programs are going to have you squat three times a week. They're going to have you deadlift all the time, do bench three times a week, and then you'll do three sets of curls on Monday. And then these same people, end up asking themselves why they have small arms. Well, it's simple. You train like a powerlifter, you're going to look like one. Natural powerlifters don't look half bad, but they look worse than natural bodybuilders. And I have heard people say that there is no difference in physique between natural and between powerlifters and bodybuilders when they're natural. That is true. That is absolutely correct. But it's for one reason and one reason only. It's because bodybuilders, natural bodybuilders on this platform, train like powerlifters. This is why the physics are similar. This is why so many people are torso dominant with toothpick arms is because they don't know how to train. So I want to bring back some respect for hypertrophy up in this bitch because I am tired of people who don't actually respect size or bodybuilding or hypertrophy and who give advice and then turn people into, again, shitty versions of themselves with spider mode physiques that make them really miserable turns them into power coppers and feeds the cycle of toxicity. We need to actually break out of this entire thing. We need to separate. And that separation also comes through pride. Guys, if you care about looks, please do yourself a favor. Start to reclaim your name. What is your name? You're a bodybuilder. You can call yourself a natural bodybuilder if you don't want to be mistaken with one of these freaks on PEDs. I understand, but call yourself that. The amount of times I meet people and I'm like, okay, so you lift, what do you do? And they just, they meander around the issue and they'll tell me, oh, I'm a, I'm an aesthetic weightlifter or I'm a power builder. Everything they can to not call themselves a bodybuilder. You would think that you're trying to get them to admit that they're Nazis. It's insane. Stop being afraid of training for looks. It doesn't make you gay. Even if it were, maybe you're gay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make you vain. It just makes you someone who is proud of their pursuit. I'm a bodybuilder. We're going to reclaim it. It takes you to admit that you're one for us to actually reclaim it. Stop being ashamed of calling yourself a bodybuilder. I understand that there's stigma attached to it. I understand that it's better to call yourself a powerlifter or what have you, but in your heart, you know that's bullshit. So to make yourself happy, actually admit it. And when that is done, we can move on to the training. I'm going to list a number of things, and it's non-exhaustive, that bodybuilders on this platform nowadays do that doesn't work for the actual practice of hypertrophy because it only functions for strength sports. The first one is deloads. What are you deloading from and what are you deloading for? Every strength athlete on earth, when they deload, they deload because they're preparing to peak or because they just peaked. Why do you peak? Do you have a meet? You're a bodybuilder. You don't have a meet. So what exactly is your reason for building your entire program around a non-existing competition? I will never understand that. I never met a bodybuilder that could tell me logically why they deload. Every time it's because, oh, it's because I'm very tired from the previous week. Okay, but why did you get so tired from the previous week? Right? The goal of peak fatigue for powerlifters is to prepare for peak strength. 
you don't do that. So you deload and then you just go right back to training with some maximal weights on top of that. Because keep in mind that powerlifters do this. Okay? They ramp up, they ramp up, they ramp up, they test their, their one rep max, the meat is here, so hopefully the meat, they can hit something like this, so they're going to deload first, and then they're going to hit it, then they deload, so they go back to lower weights, and then they start the process again. You did this. You ramped up, you ramped up, you ramped up, you deloaded, but then you never pick because there's no competition, and then you start from here again. What is the point of doing this? You didn't compete. You didn't set a PR. You're just following practices that you don't understand. Because again, YouTube is powerlifting centric. It's the way people do it. So you do it. And you never actually realized that the only thing you did by doing that deload is you sacrificed tonnage. And then you made it tougher for you to get back in the gym because your intensity was shot. I never deload. I program around the fact that I never deload. You know what it does? Stability. My tonnage is always here. I always accumulate tonnage. So my progression never takes a hit. If you are a bodybuilder and you still deload, please listen to what I say. I know that it might be shocking, but I'm telling you that you're leaving gains on the table because you're programming like an athlete that, that's expecting to peak. Again, don't put words in my mouth. I'm not saying that deloads don't work for strength athletes. It works perfectly, but it's because they deload in prevision of a peak. If there is no peak, there is no reason to deload. And that leads me to the practice of sandbagging. Most of you don't know how to sandbag. You sandbag like a powerlifter would. I see so many people who do strength in re uh, reps in reserve. That's great if you know how to use it. Most of you, when you do that, when you sandbag for deloads or for strength in reserve, or when you leave reps in the tank, the only thing you're doing is you're applying a practice that would allow you to accumulate strength and progress for the latter session for no reason whatsoever because you're not going to compete down the line. Again, think about your goal. Your goal is size, but you're training like someone whose goal is strength. So do not complain when you don't get size. You will get strength from it, but if it's not what you want, then don't be surprised. It's also the reason why a 5x5 five five is not a good, a good rep range for hypertrophy. I've said it two years ago already. 5x5 five five is not terrible, but it's a ton of sandbagging. It's a ton of non-relevant reps. It's a ton of reps that you could actually have gotten at a higher intensity. It might be good for powerlifters, but for bodybuilders, there's a ton of rep ranges that are better. And evolving rep ranges will always be better. Why? Because they force you to go to failure. Powerlifters might not want to go to failure every single time because it might damage their ability to actually progress the next session. What you are looking for is a progression in tonnage, a progression in volume, in accumulation. So it's always going to be better. Likewise for hypertrophy blocks. Why do you have hypertrophy blocks in your program? You're a bodybuilder. Your entire program is an hypertrophy block. Strength athletes need the hypertrophy block to build fibers to develop the quality of strength later, later down the line. And even for them, it's a small block if you met a powerlifter who had an hypertrophy block of nine months, you would laugh in his face. You would say, well, that's not the way to build strength. And you would be correct. But you do that too. You have an hypertrophy block, which means that you have a strength block, then deload blocks. So you only dedicate a portion of your training to hypertrophy. Do you then understand why you don't get much of it? It's because you need to target the entirety of the program towards hypertrophy. Once you have one hypertrophy block, you won't need to deload anymore because you'll be programming like a bodybuilder. Again, the very practice and idea of sacrificing hypertrophy to boost strength is valid, but it doesn't take blocks. You can just do that with what I personally call strength work, which is dedicated work at the start of the workout where you push the progression and intensity on main compound lifts. These represent a very small portion of the program. They represent a lot of high quality tonnage, but in terms of percentages of exercises, it's small. The majority of the size you will get comes from the rest of the program. Most of you, the only thing you do is strength work. And again, then you wonder why you don't grow. It's because you get almost no tonnage. Bodybuilding is about tonnage. I know that it's a concept that has completely disappeared from our conscious understanding of the sport, but it needs to make a comeback because that's what, that's what actually works. That's how you actually move away from powerlifting principles of programming and you use them for bodybuilding. As I said, it's the same methods that are just utilized differently. 
you can actually um, visit the hypertrophy series if you're interested in learning more. Now, another thing that powerlifters do and that powerlifters gave us that bodybuilders still do to this day for no reason whatsoever is the mixed grip. And this one is one of the most egregious because there's no explanation for it. Like at least the deloads, you can say it's because you're tired if you don't do it, which in my opinion is just an excuse for you to take a week off. But for the mixed grip, like can someone in the comment right now tell me, why do you do mixed grip? Because you can't grip the bar? Well, just use straps then. Well, you're going to tell me that it's because you want to grow your grip? I mean, at the end of the day, straps and a mixed grip do the same thing. They prevent the bar from rolling. Of course, straps are more effective at doing it. But if you want to train your grip, there are better ways than just doing a deadlift. And yet, I still see to this day bodybuilders using a mixed grip. There is no reason for that. It creates imbalances. It creates injury risk. Powerlifters don't have a choice. Right? If you're a powerlifter and you cannot do hook grip because you are like me and you have baby hands, you'll have to do mixed grip. But it's, they're forced into doing that to hold on to the bar. Why are you trying to hold on to the bar so desperately? You are deadlifting to build size, right? Not strength. So straps should be the valid, re the valid option. And yet I'm certain that some of you are still going to stick to mixed grip because again, you have been matrixed by powerlifting. You, have, you are children of powerlifting that try to train for bodybuilding, but it never actually gets, gets anywhere because you are training like a powerlifter. It's the same for powerlifting specificity. I have people who send me their bodybuilding program and I'm seeing stuff like competition bench or like competition squat, but you don't compete. So why are you training for a competition lift? Why do you do post bench? I know people who got bullied into doing post bench, doing conventional deadlift and doing pose uh, and doing ass to grass squat by powerlifters when they themselves are not powerlifters. Give me an explanation for these lifts. Most of the time you don't have any, again, you were just coerced into doing something you don't want to do by the majority, a majority, by the way, keep in mind that is coercing themselves in the same action, in the same movement, because they are just reinforcing practices and principles through strength of the group that they themselves don't actually want to abide by. They actually want to be bodybuilders. Minimalism is also one of them. I made a full video of minimalism. The practice of taking the training and shrinking it as much as possible is very practical for strength athletes, but for bodybuilders, it doesn't work because what you're taking away tends to be the most important thing. When I see people who tell you that if you do a bench and then a horizontal pull and then you do some rows and then you do some curls, etc., that you need to strip it down to only the bench because that's the only thing that matters, that's minimalism, but not just any type of minimalism. That's powerlifting centric minimalism because it thinks to the, it thinks back to the idea that the only thing that matters is the main movers of the big three. So it's the only thing that it's going to prioritize. I can tell you that the people who give that type of advice tend to have very unbalanced physiques because they have very unbalanced programs. They also tend to shun isolation. The amount of times I have seen people tell novices to just do chin-ups for biceps or just do bench for triceps is too much to count. It's the reason why most people have shit for biceps and shit for triceps. They don't isolate it. In bodybuilding, isolations are an important part of the game. Yes, a powerlifter might not want to isolate his real delts because it might not, not actually be worth his while, but a bodybuilder certainly does. These, again, are different perspectives. You need to look at it from the perspective of a bodybuilder, which also means that you're not going to put my bulk. I know it's very tempting to just stuff your face and get PRs after PRs and balloon up in weight, but again, why are you doing this? Are you doing this just for strength? Well, in that case, you're a powerlifter. But if the goal is to gain mass, that's not what's happening. I see so many people who gain a shit ton of weight and who blow up in their bench, squat and deadlift and who think that it's muscle gains. It's not muscle gains, it's strength gains. You might have become more adapt to the lift. You might have actually gained better leverages through the fat. But in terms of actual quality mass that you built, none of that is correlated with the weight that you actually put on the bar and on your total. It doesn't function like this, but it's what I told you when I told you about the cyclical nature of these principles. They always come back. You always, always have a new wave of people who discover books, get their first PRs and think that they discovered the holy land. Plot twist, 
I, along with a ton of natural bodybuilders, did the same mistake. We got very big and very strong, and then we realized it was mostly fat, and then we cut down, and it was a lot of time wasted. So don't waste your time. And don't be the type of people also that is anti-split. A bro split sucks, but muscle splits, muscle group splits, can be done effectively if you know how to approach them. For example, the gentleman split. And that is going to conclude all of the things that you shouldn't be doing if you want to actually develop a good body as a natural bodybuilder. I know that some of you are going to be receptive, some won't, but understand that, again, this is coming from someone who made all of these mistakes, who corrected all of these mistakes and saw tremendous improvements in my physique. So I'm just trying to help you break free from the powerlifting conditioning because I know the time it took me and I know that I would have actually liked it if someone did that for me. So that actually concludes this video on the great mugging of bodybuilding and how strength sports came to dominate YouTube fitness. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a story that I've always wanted to tell you guys because I never hear it documented anywhere and I don't want people to forget it because it's part of our lifting history in a sense. It's the great war of the kingdoms and it's documented now and I'm sure that all of you guys are also going to, in a sense, feel kinship towards my words because I think that all of you can recognize that these events actually happened and you have a memory of them. But for the people who were never there, well, it's the reason why nowadays you see everything a little bit tainted by powerlifting. Everything looks like powerlifting light and it's because they dominated, they dominated us for so long and they still to do to this day. But I'm trying to take it back. I'm trying to take as much back as possible. I'm trying to reclaim compound movements. I'm trying to reclaim programming. Because at the end of the day, the natural bodybuilder, bodybuilders of back then knew how to program. And they knew that even though powerlifting, yes, utilizes the compounds as ways to compete with one another, it doesn't make these powerlifting lifts that they can be utilized for bodybuilding. It just takes the ability to not actually program for strength and program for size. All of that has always been ours and it can come back and be ours again. Now, I gave you the metaphor of the colonization and I told you that in a sense, powerlifting and all of the strength sports colonized bodybuilding and it's the reason why we were subjugated for so long. This is also why we need decolonization, right? It was needed. The invasion of powerlifting was needed. They needed to come in to take down the tyrants, the pro bodybuilders, the PD users that were giving garbage advice to bodybuilders everywhere. They replaced them with their own kings, with the Alan Throws and the Candidos. But now it's time to cut down the dynasty of powerlifters. We don't need them anymore. We can be a self-sufficient nation. We can have our own royalty or democratic government. And it is time for them to leave. Like when a country invades another country to save them and to install democracy, right? And to take the oil as well. And then they refuse to leave. Well, now you've overstepped your boundaries and you've overstayed your welcome. You're just a burden now. So I respect, I, I request respectfully that you please get the fuck out of my lane, that you get the fuck out of my country so that we can start being a people again, have our own things and start actually working towards our goals. I would also humbly request you that you please find a way to stop your PD users to actually give advice to us. It's already enough that we have to contend with our own influencers on drugs that give us shit advice. If your PD powerlifters on top of that start giving advice to bodybuilders on how to grow their arms with shitty advice, we're never going to see the end of it. So that's another request I have. Take these people away. We don't need them. Put them somewhere in a cage. This will surely improve both the results that natural bodybuilders can get because they'll actually follow good principles and they'll move away from powerlifting programs and also our relations because as i said we're brothers right you're in, you invaded us for a while you you helped us on the side you did some abominations also we forgive you for that we thank you and we forgive you now we just want to move forward we just want to be able to again call you brothers and look at you eye to eye because right now there's no equality you dominate us too much the mugging is too intense so again please leave let us restore what we have back build back the kingdom 
and we can then build diplomatic relationships and build that brotherhood of iron that I've personally always dreamed of. We're bodybuilders, powerlifters, calisthenic athletes, strongmen, all of the people who have a deeply rooted love and respect for the iron can get together and build something and follow the destiny that is always in the cult for us. But that takes also the ability to segregate when it's needed. And I think that I've perfectly exemplified when it's needed and when we can actually unite. Because in all differences is our strength. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.